Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first ever A Crew webinar. And I'm delighted to do that together with Julie and Lynn. Say hi, Julia. <laughs> hi, Lynn. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. hi Julia. Hello, I'm Lynn. <laughs> Hello, hello. This is the moment that you can all type frantically in your chat and, and say how amazing we look and <laughs> how great it is to see people whilst you're in confinement. This is the moment, guys. And we will look at all the chats coming in. Um, I'm not going to take a lot of time because it is not my webinar, it's their webinar. But before we start, I just want to do a little bit of uh, introduction to, to these lovely ladies to, next with me. And also to tell you that like this is our first webinar. We're testing it a bit, but from the week of 27, we're going to have a full week of webinars. And we're very much looking forward to that. Um, a crew online. Wow. Um, we're doing that together with Julie and Lynn. Uh, a lot of you will know them and a lot of you might not, but uh, Julie and Lynn are from the Luxury Hospitality Group and they are very experienced in everything that has to do with hospitality. But that's not the topic of today. The topic of today is all about, well, not about Honor and Joanna. We're just running the event from our side. Hi, everybody. I'm Honor. Joanna is doing, frantically working in the back end to make sure that we keep going. And we're talking about well-being and motivation. That's what we're talking about today uh, during lockdown. Find out what makes you tick, communication, connection, and conscious thinking. But that's enough for me. I'm going to go away now, Say, uh, turn off my video, and leave it all to you. Lynn, Julia, you want me to do anything? You want me to say anything before you start? No, if you can just show us our little, yes, fine, just put yeah. our little slide up there. Oh, no, and that's, uh, we'll take it from there. Thank you. Speak to you uh, in a half an hour, three, 45 minutes again. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Go, Enjoy. Uh, oh, yes. yes okay. I'm gonna, just going to say a huge, huge thank you to you and your team for um, creating this opportunity for us. We're very, very pleased to be here. Fantastic. <laughs> Guys, make sure you put your questions in the chat. Uh, we'll look at them by the end of the of this webinar and answer all the questions if possible. Um, Lynn's and um, Julia's email address is in their uh, handle so if you need to email them you can always do that so go for it enjoy bye bye <laughs> bye Anna. i'm going to attempt to oh there we go it's worked <laughs> <laughs> so welcome everyone um for this well-being and motivation during lockdown this very strange period we're going through we're going to be talking about as Ono said what makes you tick uh communication and connection and conscious thinking but we really like this to be very interactional. So please use the chat box. I'm going to um, bring it up there. So please bring, use the chat box to ask any questions during our presentation and either Lynn or I will respond, but we will have a, a Q and A at the end of this after about 45 minutes so that we can have a chat. And, but we really want your interaction so that we can help you and we can all talk about and be vulnerable during this session. Um, Something that uh, I've been looking into during this very strange time, because um, I'm not that great on my own, I'm a people person, um, I have a dog and a horse outside, but um, I find this very, very difficult. And I really needed to be able to put a name on what we're experiencing to be able to manage it. And our primeval brains at the moment, are, are they know there's something really bad out there. We don't really know what it is and we don't know how long it's going to take. We don't, we don't know enough, and we've never been in this situation before. And that creates a lot of insecurity and, and safety issues within, within us as human beings. And the, uh, the collective name that's come out of that is World Collective Grief. Now, that kind of helped me because I thought, okay, uh, you know, there are a lot of people, 7.8 billion people on this planet, and a lot of people affected by what we're all going through now. So we're all in this together. And what it creates is something that us as humans hate, and that is uncertainty. It creates that lack of autonomy. You know, we love our choices. We can't go to the pub. We can't go out with our friends. We can't go and do activities that we like doing. That creates a horrible feeling within us. Um, there's a loss of routine uh, us, for, for people that work and go to a job, go to an office, they're losing that that connection with human beings. And if you're on a boat, you're just all together, you, you're losing that, that sense of freedom. And there's a loss of income and, and just human connection, you know, hugs. <laughs> I need hugs, I love hugs. And um, <laughs> we're losing that as well. And what 
what we've discovered is that how do we really, how do our emotions manifest themselves within us in this, this, this digital paradigm that we're in? And there are five stages of this collective grieving. But the first one I'm sure we've all experienced, I know I did, is denial. That's not going to happen. It won't happen to me. It's not going to affect me at all. And then it does happen. And then there's anger because your choices are taken away from you. You've got to stay in and you can't see your friends and family. You know, we are very lucky in the era that we're in as we do have lots of choices and we do have lots of freedom and that freedom has been taken away from us. Then there's um, this bargaining comes into it because we're told, okay, if I do this for two weeks, then it'll be okay, right? But there's no answer because it's ongoing. So we don't know when that's going to end. So again, there's that feeling of uh, our safety is taken away and, and that certainty is taken away. And then the sadness comes in because we're sad. We can't see our friends and family. We can't connect with them the way we want to connect in person. There's also the sadness that we're hearing collectively of what's happening, not only to the planet, because the planet is, is not to the planet, because the planet is really uh, starting to recover because of what's going on, but to us as human beings, you know, we, we hear how many people are dying, we hear how many people are losing their loved ones. So that sadness comes in. And then the fifth element is acceptance. And once we get to that element of acceptance, we then become powerful again. And yes, the, the choices we make are different choices. We have to make choices within this confinement, but we can make choices still. It's just a different way of looking at it and really looking at it as how we can come out of this more powerful, more learned, upskilled from, from where we were. I think we're gonna have deeper um, enlightenment and deeper insight into ourselves because you know, when we're on our own we have to look at ourselves when we're contained on a boat with everyone you've really got to start looking at yourself and how we can connect and communicate better with other people so our the core of our training is is from um, ancient philosophy called the I Ching which really helps you look at how you can improve and help yourself doing times of change and this is a, a, a massive time of change. And finally find out what makes you tick. And once we find out what makes us tick, we can then start to understand our teammates around us. We can really understand people at a far greater level. Our emotional intelligence can improve and you never stop learning with emotional intelligence. The more you can understand your emotions, the more easy it will be for you to communicate with other people. And we have to accept it and be kind. Not only kind to ourselves, it's hugely important to always be kind to ourselves, but particularly now, you know, you've got to forgive the things that you don't find easy and focus on your, your, the things that you find really helpful and useful and things you find that you can do well so that you can feel good about yourself. And there's another analogy that I love to talk about is that we have to look at our environment. A farmer doesn't look at his crops to help them grow. He looks at his environment. How can he make his environment the best possible version that it can be? And then the crops will just flourish. So this is a time to really look at your environment and how to improve it and how to make things the best they possibly can be ready for when the season starts again or when you go back to work, you can really go with it flying so that you can be the best skilled you can be you can have the best learning, you can get on with better, you can make owners and, and, and guests feel fantastic, and you can make all your teammates feel really, really good about themselves. Lynn, what would you like to add to that? Yeah, I think that's all hugely important. You know, here we are, smack bang in the middle of this uh, global phenomenon that's happening to all of us, the first in 50,000 years of recorded memory um, as, as people who haven't got any kind of touchstone to say, well, this last time it happened, we behaved like this. And, and it, it's never happened before. There's never been a, an event, a global event like this that has, has touched so many people, not, on a, not only on a global level, but also on, a, on an individual level. 
So I think what you say about creating this environment is hugely important. Um, and that environment, to me, I would, I would translate that as being your emotional environment. Because many of you are, uh, are locked down, if you like, you're in safe confinement uh, on board the most beautiful super yachts. Um, is that making you happy? I, I wouldn't think so. Um, I, I, I'm in my own home, that's easier for me. But the emotional environment that you create for yourself, this safety net that you create for yourself is going to be hugely important. So not only are you looking at yourself um, from a physical level, looking after yourself, eating healthily when you can, and many of us don't at the moment. I'm, I'm not being as healthy as I usually am. Um, I don't know why. I'm, not, I'm out of my usual routine like everybody else. So if I want a piece of toast with lots of jam and butter, it's exactly what I'm going to have. I think I feel I need some not time for deprivation for me. I like a bit of gratification now and then. So um, I'm indulging myself in that way. I'm not going mad. But if I feel like I want to have something nice and I'm going to do it, that's how I'm nurturing my soul. Um, so it is important to create this emotional safety as well as your own physical safety. So be very aware of your own state and your emotional state is, of course, created by the way you think about things. So how you're processing what is going on, the amount of news you're watching, for example, is having a huge effect on you. So if you're watching news 24-7, uh, you're going to find that your emotional states are going to be dropping. Um, so if I was you, and I, I would highly recommend that you keep yourselves informed to some degree, but don't bombard yourself with all the bad news stuff. Don't be looking at mass graves and body bags and that sort of stuff from one end of the day to another. It doesn't serve you. Uh, it doesn't serve anybody. So try to keep your interaction with news and social media posts at a very manageable level for you. You will notice your own um, emotional states changing when you've been watching lots of um, unpleasant news reels. So be aware of that. Be aware of that uh, if you're doing that for yourself and, and, and try to, to avoid all of that. Yes, Lynn, and we did, we did a survey, didn't we, recently, which we sent out to um, some of the boats that we work with, and that came up with some interesting statistics that we'd like to share with you, just to make you more aware of um, what is happening, and I'm sure you'll, you'll resonate well with, with the results. And this is something that we can share with anybody that wants this, um, to do the survey themselves on, on individual boats so that you can see what's actually happening to your people. So, Lynn, can you just share those? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, and, and, and at Luxury Hospitality, we really do care about how you're feeling, how you're coping with this, and what we can do to help you get through this in the most pleasant way possible. So we sent out this survey, and if you want it, just um, go onto our Insights email address that you'll see on the slide later. So we sent out the, a questionnaire. In fact, we sent it out not just from our own department, which is all the well-being um, and emotional intelligence uh, aspect of life, but, but all of our departments did. So our trainers in housekeeping and valet and laundry and service and wine and cocktails, all, all of us put together a series of questions and say, what do you want to know while you're down in, in while you're in confinement. So please ask for the questionnaire. Um, we're going to put some courses together. So uh, we want to do that uh, according to your needs. So we were very interested in the, um, I'm going to read it. So excuse my side of my face. Um, the, so the questions we asked people, Julia and I asked people, what are your levels of personal energy from one to five? And 80% of the respondents said that they had very high levels of personal energy. Brilliant. We're really happy about that. 80% um, also said they were looking after their own needs. This isn't just for crew that are on yachts right now. This is crew who are at home or in hotels or in other places. So they're looking after their own needs. I think in your age group, you're going to be doing that. You're going to have a, a fitness routine of some sort. If you're only allowed out for an hour a day, you're going to go out in the sunshine or, or even if it's raining. I know it's fabulous in Manchester at the moment and not so nice in in Malta, but you're going to get out and about and um, do some exercise or do some yoga or whatever it is. I expect the number of people taking up yoga right now has gone through the roof. Um, so 80% are looking after their own needs. 80% though also are often experiencing feelings of guilt, lethargy and boredom. Why are they feeling why are they feeling guilt, do you think? It's probably because they're saying, um, 
I've got a job and somebody else I know has been let go or they might be saying I should be doing more to help my family or they should be, they might be saying I've got a good income coming in maybe I should be contributing to the NHS or any other um, health system that you're in in your various countries maybe maybe those are the sort of questions you're you're feeling guilty about um, lethargy and boredom yes of course you haven't got enough to do um, to keep you happy uh, it's a choice uh, if you're not having enough to do to maintain the boat, and I know in places like Palmer, you're not even allowed to wash down. This is not considered to be necessary by the governmental authorities. So anything you have to do to keep the boat functioning, you can, but washing down is not one of them. So, you know, it's a shame because that's a fabulous activity, not only to keep the boat in good, in, um, good shape, but also get you out and about and keep you busy, get some nice music on and, and get out there. So it's a shame, but it's, it is what it is. Um, 60% of all the respondents uh, are not using their time constructively on board. And of course, that relates exactly to um, uh, feelings of, of lethargy and boredom. So maybe this is what is something that Julia and I can address. We can help you use your time constructively. For myself, I'm, I've signed on to um, online training courses. I've chosen a subject I absolutely love, which is personal development. And I've just finished a five day one uh, a five week one two days ago and I just enrolled in another one um, and that was one that I did every day for five weeks and I've just enrolled in another one which is once a week for a year because I, I want to keep myself busy too. We're busy with our work, we're creating online courses, we're um, coming onto webinars like this, we're hosting our own webinars so in our own rights we're busy. We're, we're lucky we're working with a team and we're all um, kind of encouraging each other to be that. So what was a beautiful statistics and the last one I'll share is that 100 percent of people who responded to the questionnaire are optimistic about their future, which I thought was wonderful, really fabulous. Um, I'd like to share very quickly. I went on another webinar recently. I don't know whether any of you were on it, um, brought to us by She of the Sea, Jenny Matthews and Natasha. And um, in that uh, webinar, one of the hosts was a, a, a chappy called Tim Clark. He's the owner of Key Crew. And uh, he, he sent out a survey to 80 captains on uh, various boats that they uh, deal with, 76 of which um, of whom replied. Of those 76 captains, only 5% had had to let people go on a permanent basis. Of those 76, 24% had reduced the numbers on board. That means that 76% were actually operating as normal. And only 10% of the 76 yachts had reduced the crew salaries. So this is these are very, very optimistic statistics. So if you find yourself going down in this little spiral of help, I'm going to lose my job and all of this sort of stuff, Try, try to have a, a more measured um, touch point with these sort of statistics that have just been done. These were only released last week, so it's not like they were done two months ago. Um, also, in, in terms of rotation, 82% of all the yachts um, surveyed are maintaining rotation. They might have to juggle around the holiday um, allowances in some way, but they're maintaining rotation. 40% of these yachts have owners who expect to use their their yachts in May or June. That might be a little optimistic only because this was done last week. And here, for example, our restrictions in France, um, our restrictions have been um, prolonged until the 11th of May. But um, then June, so 40% of owners are hoping to use their boats in June and 90% of all owners are anticipating using their yachts this season. It might mean that the season um, is prolonged, so it'll start. Uh, a bit later, maybe it won't start till June, um, who knows, we'll see, um, and then it'll go on a little bit longer. But people are optimistic about the future and these people, these owners are people who are um, intelligent, they're good businessmen, they're watching the news, they're looking at the economies and they are expecting to be using their yachts um, at some point during the season. So I think that's very encouraging statistics. What do you think, Julia? Yeah, really, really encouraging. And I saw that Zenia just said that's great news. Um, she'd been worried about crew getting laid off and salaries getting reduced. It is very positive. And um, so now's the chance to get really motivated and really get out there thinking, right, what are my strengths? What can I do? What can I upskill? What can I come out of this with that makes me the best version of myself? 
is that more self-awareness? Is that to learn to become more, more emotionally intelligent? Is that to have better communication skills? Is that to be um, uh, better at um, housekeeping or anything that you need to do? Find a course online that you can do. LH has lots of them that you can look at our website and have a look, see what you want to do and really get good about what you're doing. And that will make you feel brilliant because the better you are at something, the more confident you feel, confidence is key, the better you're going to feel. And the, when you do that, we give out our natural inherent energy, six, uh, 20 foot away around us. It's called our aura. If we feel good, we make people around us feel good. If we're not feeling great, people around us aren't going to be feeling great. So be responsible for how you feel. Be responsible for what you're doing. Be responsible for what you can make the best out of this situation that we're in. And it, it could there could be a silver lining here in how you can come out of it and think, do you remember that time in 2020 when we had that horrible virus, when we didn't know what was going on? I, I got so much better at this and I, I qualified in doing that. And it would make a, a huge difference to your future. So thank you for those stats, Lynn. I don't know why we've gone on to two tiny screens. Our screens have changed. I don't know either. We'll have to ask Ono. There we are. I'll have to say, we'll have to ask Ono to troubleshoot it. Um, I think it's important for us to remember that um, right at the moment, we're in an experience. We're having an experience. How we manage this is going to be up to us. So this is our current experience. But we are also looking forward to our post-COVID, if you like, experience. So who are you being right now? Who would you prefer to be right now? And who do you want to be when we emerge from this? Because that's going to be the next phase of your life. You have to create this better version of yourself right now, because when we come out of this, and we will, because however long it takes, it's only temporary. Um, it might seem interminable at the moment, but it is only temporary. And as Julia says, when we look back, it'll, see like it, it'll feel like it went in a blink of an eye. It's like having children one minute they're two and the next minute they're 22. And I know I've got a 22 year old and a 24 year old and I still think they're, they're tiny. Time goes by quickly. So who do you want to be when you come out of this? You don't want to be bored, lethargic not having taken the opportunity to upskill, not not using your time properly. It was interesting for Julia and I to, to get these statistics this morning from our survey to find that, yes, you're looking after your personal health, good. Are you looking after your emotional health if you're not using your time wisely? The answer is no, because you're allowing yourself with too much time on your hands not to be productive. This is a waste of precious time. Where you could be doing, could be anything. You could be learning, you could be learning anything you like, anything that's a passion that's non boat related, or you could go on to training courses that are boat related and is going to take you from where you are now to where you want to be. And quite frankly, if I was a captain working on a yacht and I was looking at my my crew and I'm trying to think, uh, oh, dear, I've got to let 2% go or whatever. Who am I going to let go? I'll be looking around and seeing who's making the best of their time, who's upskilling, who's keeping cheerful. And I'm going to want to keep those people on board. And so will the owners. So it's up to you to make those proper choices for yourselves now. Yeah, I'm just going to share a file here if this works. I think, um, has that happened? I think it's sharing now. It's a file that um, LH has created um, with lots of activities on it. So if you are all on a boat together, um, there are loads of activities on there put together by all of our professional team that have worked on boats that have thought about collaboratively what will help you in whether it's terms of upskilling or whether it's terms of having fun or a bit of both. So um, that's just, it says it's sharing. I'm not very good with technology, technological stuff. So that is sharing now, it says it is. I hope that's right, Ono. Okay, excellent. We'll take a chance to look at it because um, what we've decided... All working well, all working well. We're <laughs> <Is it> working <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Julia and I are both dinosaurs. We don't like technology at all. Um, so we're so glad to have Ono in the background. Um, yes, yeah, so have a look at it because we are also, Luxury Hospitality, good old Luxury Hospitality, is going to offer you €250 Euros because we want to pay for the first round of drinks you have when you go ashore. So if you're only two of you on a boat and you share a picture of you doing any of the activities, 
that we suggest on board, whether it's a fancy dress party or a bridge night or a or poker night or a cocktail night or whatever it is, or any of the educational stuff, find out about the wines on board, find out about the materials that are being used on board, how to maintain them. We are going to choose the best of the photograph and we're going to very happily give you 250 euros. So if you've 10 of you, that's a lovely cocktail each. If it's two of you, you're going to have a jolly good night on us. And that's what we want to do. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah. Can we yeah. join? That's that yeah. would be great. <laughs> but we have to choose the winner, so maybe we'll just choose the two and we'll go and join. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So another um, element that we wanted to bring in here, which is uh, crucial at all times, but in particular now, is dialogue. Communication and connection and dialogue is crucial at all times, but in particular now when you can really make a difference to connect with who you are living with, whether you're on board, even if you're living on your own at the moment, like me, um, connecting with other people on screen and just making that real difference in, in connecting and communicating and, and coming up with different ideas of, of that happening, whether it's uh, using the house party app or whether it's doing a Zoom call or anything that really helps you communicate. Um, one of the things that really has to be used at this time is to demonstrate your vulnerability and to let people know that it's okay to not be okay for you to feel shitty one day you know you can't always be positive and I think if people that always say it's positive it's unrealistic there are lots of positives to take out of here I always call myself a, um, a realistic optimist because I look at what's really happening and I'll forgive myself if I don't feel great some days, but I know that I can turn it around. I know that I can find something that's going to make me happier. I know that I can call a friend or I know I can watch something funny on YouTube. I'm, I make myself laugh a lot. So, um, and laughter is incredibly important. So not only doing that for yourself, but also looking at your team and watching them. So if, if somebody you can see is just going down a bit, maybe they are watching too much on uh, Instagram or on social media or just too much of it that's making them worried. And that's creating this, what's called an, an amygdala hijack in their brain, which is when cortisol keeps coming into you because it's, it's, it's like your fight, fear, um, fight or flight reaction that comes from when we were in we're cavemen. It's, it's that one that gets you in the middle of the night, you hear something when you're laying in bed, you, you wake up, think, what's that? And instantly you feel frightened and worried and scared and then you realize it's okay and it goes but it can stay in your body for three to four hours so with this news and all of this stuff happening and if we're not letting people know that we don't feel great that's constantly staying in our bodies and that can manifest itself in all kinds of different ways so really as Lynn was saying earlier on keep the news to a minimum. We know what's going on. We don't know when it's going to happen. So to constantly watching it isn't gonna make it get here any faster. It will go, it will pass. We will be out in the season again. We will be out with our friends again. We will be out with our families. Can't wait for the barbecues in the summer. It will <laughs> be happening. It's just not here right now. So it's to look at what changes we can make right now, right here, to make ourselves be, ourselves be the best versions we possibly can when we get out and to look at our environment and create that positive workforce culture that we what, that we need and want. So dialogue is incredibly important. Um, modeling vulnerability is incredibly important. Um, I'll share a little personal story. Um, my mum lives next to me, next door to me, and um, we get on okay. But I've been talking to a lot of people that are at home looking after their elderly parents. Okay, this is a, a parent thing, but it does relate to people in general. And um, I was on my own for Easter Day. I thought, well, I better invite her over. So invite her over, start the drinking. <laughs> so, how am I going to cope with this? And um, eventually, I just thought I had to let my barriers down because I've got barriers of being, I, I look after everything and everybody and I, I do all the shopping, I do this, I do that, everything it needs doing, I do. And there's a resentment in there. If I'm honest with myself, there's a resentment in there. So turned it around, let my barriers down and actually had a really nice time. The barriers are creeping back up again and I'm going to try to watch them to bring them down. But who is there? 
in your environment right now that you can be vulnerable with? Who can you let those barriers down with? Who can you open those connecting doors with? Who can you open the windows of your soul to and be vulnerable to connect at a higher level? Can you imagine what will happen? If you can do that right now, if you're having any issues on the boat or any issues with your teammates or anything that's going on, if you can just get your barriers down, because it starts with you, take your barriers down and make that connection better so that when you take off for the season, if you're on a boat or you go back to work, Take off for the season, the experience that not only you are going to have, your teammates are going to have, but most importantly, the owners and the guests are going to have, with you emitting this wonderful energy all across the boat and creating this amazing culture of well-being on that boat, or within the office, or within the family. You can do it with everybody. So really concentrate on how you can let those barriers down and really embrace vulnerability because vulnerability is a fantastic leadership tool for yourself and for others yeah absolutely julia that's so important to know this self-care stuff this is not about being selfish this is about looking after you because unless your cup is full you cannot look after other people if your energies are depleted you're working on a yacht you're very tired your emotional energies are low you cannot give the best service to your guests and to your owners. You can't, because what you're doing is you're taking resources from an already depleted cup, if you like, yourself, your cup, um, and just more and more and more depleting your own energies until you get to breaking point. And then maybe you're looking to other things to, to reconcile that. You might be looking to drink or drugs or um, bad eating habits or whatever it is. You're trying to compensate in the most negative way. You've got to look after yourself first. You've got to be this whole version of yourself. Um, so we, it, during these times, it's really important not to allow yourselves to be victims of the circumstance. This is a circumstance. That's all it is. You cannot be fearful enough. You cannot be sad enough. You cannot be depressed enough to change it. You can't. What you've got to do is manage your own energy in order to get through this as best you can. And you can do it. You can do it in a much more productive way. It's a change of mindset. It's deciding that you want to enjoy this time, this luxury of having time on your hands. It is a luxury. Imagine when you're back on the boat and working, you'd be going, oh, I wish I just had five minutes to myself. I haven't even got five minutes to sit down and have a meal. I never, I haven't had lunch for a week. It, it, it's the sort of thing that, you know, we've all said when we've been working on boats. So turn it around, find the gratitude in it. You cannot be feeling the emotion of gratitude and the emotion of sadness at the same time or any other negative emotion. You can't feel, as humans, we can't feel two emotions at the same time. So when you find yourself going down this fearful or, or, or worried or depressed cycle, look around and see what you're grateful for, because it's easy to lose sight of that. You have many, many, many things to be grateful for. Even if you're safely confined on a boat, uh, you've still got clean laundry. You've still got a bed to lie in. You've still got food, regular food. You've still got money coming in. Even if you've had your salary reduced, you've still got money coming in. Um, and believe me, when you've got a land-based sal salary, even your reduced salaries are looking very good to the rest of us. So try to be in that more grateful state of mind, because that grateful state of mind is going to affect the way that your body feels, the way that your body feels and the way that it functions. It's really important to keep a healthy state of mind. Yeah, it's very, very powerful. And um, again, going back to the vulnerability and feeling um, the connection and the communication that's going, opening those lines, and also feeling appreciation for them, feeling appreciation for the people that are around you, because there are a lot of people, like me, that are completely on their own, and it's not very nice. So um, Lynn and I talk a lot about energies. That's where we are, because we are energetic beings on an energetic planet in an energetic universe. And we all have strengths and challenges. So focusing on your strengths, what you know you're good at, you've got time to do that now. Really think about what makes you tick. What is it that I know I'm really good at? And there may be some members in your team that are good at the things that you find difficult. 
So this is part of um, the ethos of LH, the, the groundwork that we use to, to start with insight is to take this personality test, which finds out where you are energetically. And it highlights your strengths, whether you're a creative person or a people person or very into timing and service, or whether you're into systems and analytical things. That's why Lynn and I both find um, we're dinosaurs, as she said, with anything to do with <laughs> technology, because um, we have very little energy in the bit that just deals with systems and um, compliance and things yeah. like that. We're all about the people. So um, it's very useful to find out um, about yourself and you'll, you can find information, more information about that on, on our website. But to, if you can just concentrate on the people that you're with, how they function, feel, behave, communicate and operate, you can start, you've got the time to watch and observe. And if you notice that somebody's more introverted, that they are sitting on their own a little bit more, take the time to find out whether they're, they're a bit depressed because of the situation or whether that's just their natural state. And the same with more of an extroverted person. You can have a very extroverted person that's all bravado and lively, but they may be really struggling inside. So just watching again, whether how people behave and support them, support each other. So be vulnerable enough to say you don't feel great so that others can reach out to you and you reach out to other people so that in this time you're all supporting each other. And hopefully one of the great positives that come out of this is that we'll move forward in the supportive, caring, nurturing roles that we all need to do for each other and for our planet. But the planet's looking after itself now because it hasn't got the humans disrupting it. So, <laughs> so really think about the nurturing that we can do for each other. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, very important. And and um, the, the girls that maybe find this a bit easier, uh, we girls kind of talk to each other in a bit more open way. Um, don't forget the boys on the boat. They might need a bit of uh, nurturing as well. It, it, lots of lots of them think that they have to show this very hard, steely kind of exterior. It's all good for me, but they're probably suffering. They're human. They're probably suffering in the same way. Just don't want to show it. So um, boys, be, don't be afraid to be vulnerable. You'll find that you'll have much, much easier relationships with everyone on board when we come out of this. We're all in it together. Um, we've got members of our team. Some of them are absolutely enjoying it, loving the time on their own. Some of them are struggling. Julia struggles because she's such a people person. Um, I'm forever wanting to send her hugs across the, across the airwaves because um, I know that's what she needs. Um, uh, but there are some of our team who are locked in with their families in, in small, smaller um, apartments. And so it, everything is a struggle in a, in a different way. Be vulnerable about it. You know, say this is this area I'm struggling in. You find somebody might come with a solution or just talking to somebody is always helpful. So don't be afraid of that. We're all human. We're all going through it. Um, just say how you feel. It's and fine. remember, and remember, there's a term: this collective grief and what and what it actually entails. And there's also another really important thing: that there are 7.8 billion people on the planet, and not one person. This was really fascinates me. Not one person can think the same thought at exactly the same time. We can all feel different things, and we can all feel similar things. And we can all understand feelings much better than we can, easier than we can understand thoughts. You will never understand or know what someone else is thinking. Their thoughts are their own. Whereas you can kind of relate to feelings and that's where communication is so important. Again, to look at people's body language. Body language, I've got, I've got the um, percentages here. Body language is 55%. It's high, the highest version of communication that we have which is amazing, isn't it, Lynn? Yes, yeah, it's surprising because you'd think the words that you actually say are the most important part of that communication, but they really are not. Julia will give you the other statistic. Yeah, 7% is uh, the spoken word. And when you think, uh, well, you know, most people just speak. And um, the voice tone is 38% and the body language is 55%. So watching yourself, your body language, watching someone else's body language, and using the, the number one uh, tool that we have as human beings for communication, and that's these things, that's why we've got two of them, and these, that's why we've got two of them, and only one of these. So we have one mouth, two eyes, and two ears, because these are much more powerful as a communication tool that we inherently have than the spoken words, and that comes from the, that shows with the percentages. So watch everybody, watch yourself, listen, 
do you know, Lynn, do you remember what the, um, the, what the timing is for when we listen, for how long we listen, how many seconds we listen for before we start to formulate our response? I can't remember, but it's very few, maybe two or something like that. Three seconds, apparently. Three. Right? Oh. So it's three seconds. And before we start going, right, this is what I'm going to say back. So are you truly present anymore? Are you truly listening to the person that's communicating to you? So really upskill your listening skills. It's um, one of the most amazing skills you can have as a human being. And we've got them there. We've got two of those and we've got two of these. So listen and watch and help each other and support each other and um, see what you'll need. See what you can find collectively as a team to upskill your, all of you on the boat and independently, like Lynn's found things that can help her independently to really make her feel a better version of herself once she gets out of here. So there's all sorts of things we can do to use this time wisely and really, really bring it, make it a useful time rather than something that's um, driving us all mad. <laughs> 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 Absolutely, and and you know, make the make the difference between social distancing and social isolation. Um, I, I think most of you on this call are probably um, communicating with with friends and family very easily. I mean, if you've got to have a global lockdown, you might as well have it in the age of technology, because you know, baby boomers like like Julia and I. <laughs> if we if I'd have, if we'd have had this sort of pandemic when I was a young stewardess back in the eighties, we'd have been really isolated. I mean. Forget mobile phones, forget social media. We didn't have any of that. Um, so at least we can all stay connected, which is a huge bonus. You can be incredibly grateful for that. So when you find yourself going, oh, poor me, remember to give those gratitude things. Like I said earlier, I'm so grateful for social media and for telephones. I can keep in communication with other people. Absolutely. Yeah, look about for the, the, um, the creative people on your boat, what we call the dynamo people that have all these ideas and tap into their ideas. And maybe you can be the sort of person that can take those ideas and put them, make them work. Because a lot of really, really creative people, they just have the ideas, but they can't make them work. So think about who you've got around you that has some great ideas to make something or create something or, or teach you something, something that you can all help each other to, to learn about and really watch your emotions because your emotional state is what will take you up or down. So really be aware of your emotional state at all times. And as Lynn's saying, gratitude can help you so much. First thing in the morning, three things, I'm grateful for X, Y, Z. And last thing at night, three things. It takes seconds to do, but it has been proven to change the mindset to, to put you to sleep in a, in a better frame of mind and wake you up in a better frame of mind. So just gratitude is a, is a hugely important tool for us to use. I'm just seeing some things come in here. Um, yeah, there's lots of ideas of different courses and, um, and just saying about um, communication, how effective it is and how useful it is as a tool to really help you as a human being and help you connect much better with other people. Yeah, this is a time for finding out about yourself. It's a time for introspection. It's a time for um, finding out about others that you work with. Um, it, it, if there's a lot of stuff you can be doing while you've got this lovely quiet time. You don't have to be busy all the time. We're probably going to come out of, well, we will 100% come out of this with different perspectives. You might even find that the things that you used to do on a regular basis, you can't be bothered to do anymore. They're just not of any interest. Your whole perspective has changed. It's a very interesting time to really find out about you. Uh, and in finding out about you, you f get this fabulous sense of identity. You know where your true values are. Um, and finding out about other people in, in exactly the same way. You, you see them in a different light. So I, I think it can be a very exciting time. It's, this is going to be a time, it's going to be what you make of it, because you can either say, poor me, I'm fed up, I'm in lockdown, it's never going to end, blah, blah. None of us knows that. That's, that's, that's just taking down a negative spiral. Keep yourself upbeat. There's plenty of good stuff. You, you know, you look on Look on, I had the most wonderful feeling today when I when I woke up and I looked at Facebook and there's this amazing 98 year old man, a war veteran, he's called Tom Moore. And he decided with his little Zimmer frame, he's going to do 100 meters, 100 times 25 meters up and down his garden. He's got this little garden, he's in his Zimmer frame, he's all dressed up to the nine with his war medals on. Fabulous. He wants to raise a thousand pounds for the National 
health service in England. Well, this was probably, I don't know, three or four days ago, first started. Well, unless you've been following it, you probably know, he has now raised over 12 million pounds oh. by walking up and down his garden. How do you think he must feel that just that little gesture of humanity? He must feel amazing. Even my reading of it makes me feel good. His family must feel fabulous. I mean, little gestures can really, really, really go a long way. Look, in, tap into the good stuff. You know, when this all first started, or even only about a, a week ago in England, people were asked to volunteer. Who wants to volunteer to help the National Health Service? Well, 750,000 people stepped forward in 24 hours to help the NHS deliver medication, pick people up, do whatever was necessary. This is just ordinary human people. There are really, really, really good things going on as well. Shift your attention away from the number of people that are dying. There's nothing you can do to stop that. There isn't. You are serving yourself. You are serving your friends. You are serving your families by keeping yourself in a happy state. There's nothing your mum and dad and your friends at home want to hear more than, how are you doing, dear? I'm fine. I've had a great day. I went on this great course or I, I, I found a new yoga program or whatever it might be. I'm happy. I'm looking after myself. It's good stuff. You're helping everybody, not just yourself. It's really yeah. important. Don't stress about the things you can't change. No, but be the change no you want to be. That's where, what we want to um, just leave you with. And we've got some questions yes. now I'd like to ask you to see if you can just let us know in the chat and then we'll ask you if there's any questions. But based on what we've been talking about, what would you like to do next? Ask yourself, send us a message. What would you like to do next? What can you think about that you could do that's going to help you be the best version of yourself once you come out of this in a few weeks' time? Which it will be. It's going to be a few weeks' time, she says, crossing her fingers. And yeah. how would you like, like to use these ideas that we've been talking about? How would you like to put them into some sort of formulation to help yourself? Let's think about it. How can you do that? How could you use it? And what assistance can we give to improve your emotional resilience and the quality of your communication moving forward. So just if you've got some answers to those questions, or if you've got any other questions you'd like to share with us, that would be great. So yeah. let's just see here. Uh, I've got a reading from Hannah. So I, know, I use a medical laboratory technology. Oh, that's about something we can use to, to learn about COVID. Okay. So any other questions, any answers to those questions? What would you like to do next? Can you just think of something that you could think, okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to sign up for a course. I'm going to research a course. I'm going to do this within this time frame. So you can give yourself, start with the end in mind. I've got something I could do and I could have it done by then. So is there anything that anybody would like to say on the chat? Yeah, and, and also, please, if there's something you're, that's worrying you that you don't want to say on this chat, you can't be that, that vulnerable, pop us an email, uh, insight at luxuryhospitalitymgm.com. We'll answer those emails. Julia and I will receive them, and one of us will answer you. So um, if you're having a hard time with something you want to reach out, very, very happy to help you. If you want to know about our online courses, you've got the link there. Karina just put the link in. We're, we're um, running an online course all about emotional intelligence. Um, psychological security, um, how to define yourself as in, in your own personal personality um, by taking the talent dynamics test. If you just want to find out about taking the talent dynamics test, all of those things, you ju just drop us an email and uh, we will send you the responses. Well, that's great, Zaini. Zaini, uh, I'm going to head back to the books, sharpen up my skills and old course okay. notes not to fall behind. Well done, Zaini. That is fabulous. It's, it's a good intention and that's going to really serve you well. And, and you know, set a time aside each day to do that. Find a, a nice location to do it, somewhere that's, that, that you enjoy being in. Um, and uh, yeah, just go for it. Why not? No learning is ever wasted. And setting up, I think another, um, another tip that was told to me, because I haven't got a very big house, is to change your positions of where you're working. So I know if you're on a boat, you've got certain places to you can only go. But think about if you want to do a learning period, where are you going to go to do that? Or if you're in a home, create different spaces that are where you learn something or then where you have a glass of wine. or where, So it just changes things up. So you're, 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 just, you're separating 
your workspace from your personal space. Because what's happening to a lot of people is that it's all merging into one. So we're not re-energizing in the right way. So you're working, 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 and then you're just going to bed. Or that happens with boats, I know, when you're working in a season. But try and find that time for you, that space for you, so that you can re-energize. Because when we normally go to work or we're on a boat, then we have our time. In these situations, you kind of lose your time. It just all molds into one. So be very mindful about what your time is and where you have that specific time to re-energize. Yeah, exactly. And, and keep in mind who you want to be when you come out of this. You want to come out as an, 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 a, a strengthened person, a person better than you are now, because we, that's what we're all striving for in life. So don't take steps backwards just because we're experiencing this lockdown. Um, there are lots of things that you can do to improve your learning skills, your any, any sort of skills. You, 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 the world is your oyster. You have this technology. It's a fantastic time to do that sort of thing. So don't waste it. Oh, that's great. Just super says, I'm going to finish my final thesis for my master's degree and write down an interior Bible. Wow. Oh, amazing. That's amazing. Fabulous. Fabulous. And, and it's true. If, you, if you're doing things that also help other people, uh, it, it makes the intention much stronger. It's lovely to see who's going to, to benefit from that. Well done, Jacipa. Fantastic. OK. Anybody else? Any other questions or answering that question of um, uh, what you, how we can help? If there's anything that we can do to help you, just please get in touch, you know, stay yes. vulnerable. Just still feel that we're here and we can talk to you. And if you don't want to ask us now, as Lynn said, our web, our um, email is insight at luxuryhospitalitymgm.com. And Ono's yeah. back. Hey. Ono! I'm back. I hope you were so good. I really enjoyed this. Oh, we I've loved been it thinking, too. I, I, I got all my positive thoughts gathered. <laughs> and so oh, it's great. There's also This is a great moment to do something very positive. Guys, I'm going to share a little poll for you guys to say what you thought about this workshop. Just, just like uh, give, give us an answer. Here we go. Oh, Paul is started. Right <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what people think. Fair, it, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Um, whilst people are answering the polls, uh, if there, I see there's a few more chats coming in. This has been great. Thank you, Emma. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Maker. Thank you to everybody. Thank you to everybody who took time to be on the call. It, yeah. We've really, really loved interacting with you. We hope it's been helpful. We hope it's lifted your spirits a little bit because there is a lot of good stuff going on. We're going to show you our final slide anyway in a little while and you can see how our lovely planet is recovering in these times too. You want yes, me to start your slides? Yes, Should you can want to. Yes. Yeah, here we go. Here you go. Thank you, Diana. Yeah, so here we are. Himalayas visible for the first time in 30 years from this northern city, smog-free skies over LA, the animals and birds that feel free to wander around in towns and cities, and the clear waters return to the Venetian canals. It, it is very uplifting. This is just five. I had dozens of pictures. These are just five that I chose. And so, um, yes, we want to yeah, end my, on a happy note. Yeah, my house Martins arrived back this morning, and oh. um, so every year I have stables outside, and the house Martins come every year. And I was getting worried because we've had such warm weather, and I was thinking it's later than it is into the season. And they yeah. arrived this morning, and uh, oh, I lifted. How lovely! They 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 born here, and they always come back to where they where they were born, and where they um yeah where their parents left them. So, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you so much, Julia. Thank you. We're going to end with a video that Lynn selected this morning. It's a feel. It's all about feeling good. Yeah. Um, we're yeah. going to mute the microphones. We might have a little yeah. dance. Yeah. We might want to. We are uh, definitely going to have a dance. We're going to have a dance. <laughs> thank you very much, everybody. Thank Hope you very to see much, you everyone. From, yeah, from the twenty seventh onwards for the for the next uh, round of webinars. Julia and Lynn will be back. What are you are. talking about next time? You'll be back, right? Uh, we're talking about insight and and the learning zone. So two sessions, one on the twenty eighth and one on the thirtieth. Yeah. Fantastic. Good. Yeah, we're looking Thank forward you, to it. Honor. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye, everybody. Stay happy. Bye. We're Stay play well. The music. Enjoy the video. Bye bye. Bye. Let's mute. She rattled the ass in my plastic cup I say yes, ma'am, fill her up Tell me something good that I don't know Cause this world's been kicking my behind Life ain't been a friend of mine Lately I've been feeling kinda low And she looked back over her shoulder Pointed at the sign hanging up on the wall Say
This is amazing, amazing, amazing. <laughs> we loved it. We, really, loved, we it. loved it, didn't we? It was yeah. amazing. Hey, guys, um, we're still on air, um, which means just for, uh, we had a lot of like Instagram uh, posts coming around. Thank you so much for sharing and for all the Insta stories. We had some people saying like, sorry, we missed it, but we're in the US, couldn't get up at five in the morning. <laughs> all, everything is recorded. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna put a little intro, outro to it, and then we're gonna put it live. Don't worry guys, your chats will not be visible. It's just a video. <laughs> so, uh, of course that would be, well, they were pretty appropriate chat, so we're really happy with them. Um, thank you again for the poll results. Um, I see that like um, not everybody was extremely happy, so a few disagrees, but most of people think that it was what we expected. Um, if you have we any feedback to us, we would love to hear it. This was our first webinar, so anything, uh, just uh, pop me, pop us a message in Instagram or send us an email. We w we want to learn as well. We can improve. We can do better. And this was a bit of a test run. So um, thank you, everybody. I think we're going off air. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. See bye, you everybody. next time. Bye. bye.